Hi everyone, and welcome to a Gem of a Secret podcast. My name is Donatella My Secrets. And my name is Coco Gem Holiday. How are you doing tonight, Coco? I'm actually doing super great. Me and Donna aren't even in the same place, but I feel stuffed because it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> Giving, Giving, listeners. Uh, yes, this will be our Thanksgiving episode. Um, I am going to be spending one of my first Thanksgiving. Actually, no, I spent last Thanksgiving yeah, last here Thanksgiving. In, in Portland as well. So this will be, yeah, another Thanksgiving um, away from Colorado, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically away from Grand Junction. But, yeah. you know. Um, live yeah. our truths, live our journeys. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, but, it's, it's yeah, because last year, gosh, I can't even remember what I did for Thanksgiving last year. Because um, I just remember being so poor. Um, yeah, actually, I, I remember because I just started my job October mm-hmm. 1st. Um, so I would have gone back. Oh, my gosh. I do remember. It was like literally like 48 hours. I think I was like home, maybe. Like, yeah, it was no big deal. Like, it was so yeah. sad. Yeah. Yeah. But now this year, though, everything is different. It is very different. Yeah. Because hashtag we're going to talk about it again. COVID. <laughs> yeah. So let's give another update um, on on uh, basically what's transpired since last week. Yeah. So um, so my my news broadcasts are still the same. And I, honestly, I get tickled. I <laughs> yeah. get so tickled because it's just like um, the way it starts now. And I won't repeat what I said last episode, but go listen to that episode. Uh, the news goes. Um, today, Trump once again has failed to prove his lawsuits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's how the headlines are every single day. I, yeah, I'm I'm waiting for something new to pop up, but no, no. Uh, once again, Trump is uh, fighting this with every bit that he has. Mm-hmm. Um, also, funds are withheld from Biden um, for a smooth transition because. Oh, I did hear about there's that. an appointee that um, is. Withholding that basically, which is which is really a Trump to, appointee. You have to imagine, listeners, like this is a really terrible time for us. Like in the yeah. sense of like uh, the I know we talked about it a little bit, but for those of you who are just tuning in for our Thanksgiving episode, it yeah. it, it does suck when there's not a smooth transition to power because it makes us vulnerable as a nation. It does. It definitely does. Yeah. Um, and you know, since it is a Thanksgiving episode, what an episode to be bringing up politics at the dinner table. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh, I feel like we should have done something where like we talked about clapbacks or things like that. But actually, let's do this because we're actually this episode we're going to be talking about love and relationships. Yeah. Um, but I think we should do for the first part of this episode, let's make it a little fun and a little bit lighter. And maybe we should talk about what are some of your favorite Thanksgiving stories? That's not lighter. <laughs> that's not- <laughs> Donna's like, that's trauma. Thank you. No. Um, actually, no, I actually don't really have too many bad Thanksgiving stories, especially as a kid, but I think the older that I got, every holiday just kind of ended up being me <laughs> being a like a lone liberal while my conservative family brought up politics in very uncomfortable situations. Oh, wonderful. That's yeah, <laughs> like it always comes up. It always yeah. comes up and I'm the lone liberal in the room and I'm just either have to I either have to be quiet or I have to um, argue with everyone. And then I get hysterical because I'm being teamed up on and Oh, right. Yeah. You cry. I yeah, I that. cry. <laughs> every, every Thanksgiving, Donna would call me and be like, yeah, they just were really mean again. <laughs> and she gets so mad and frustrated. Uh, my stories, I, the thing is, like, so my family is okay-ish with the queer and the gay and whatever, and my family's all liberal anyway, but it's... um. It, I never really... Until I started dating my husband, I feel like we didn't get to have those moments yeah. to where like they really like got to like, I don't know. Like I didn't get to have, I guess. So being a queer kid in a black family, it's really hard to like feel a part of like the festivities, I guess. Yeah. Cause yeah. you always feel like you're hiding a piece of yourself. Cause like queer and black families is so different. And um, so it wasn't until like the last few years where I felt like I could really like have um, uh, my husband, Adam being like part of like, like everything that was happening, I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess yeah. like, so that's new. But before that, I guess to talk about like my stories is like, it, I wasn't out to my family, and so they were fine. Yeah, <laughs> they're liberal. I wasn't out. It was fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, yeah. No, it's uh, it's always been kind of weird. I think Thanksgiving was like the first holiday too that I, I mean, that was I think we told the story 
on this podcast, I think it probably was during my coming out episode, about my ex going in, because my dad managed a grocery store, about my ex going in on Thanksgiving to introduce himself to my dad. (laughs) After That's just such a wonderful like thing a to year do. after I had come out, God. like and it, so my family wasn't really cool with it. And then there's here's this guy that's ten years older than me, going in to introduce <laughs> himself to my dad at his work. <laughs> So that's a, a, that's a Thanksgiving memory. That's 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 a loving memory to get us into relationships. Yeah. But I forgot to ask Donna, like, what are you wearing today? Like, describe your outfit uh, for me, girl. You know, we're talking about relationships, so I decided to just dress as a red flag producing factory, <laughs> <laughs> just a factory that produces red flags. <laughs> I like I like the boxy shape of the factory. Yeah, yeah I, I produce like uh, one every few minutes. Um, yeah, I, it's getting crowded in our room here, <laughs> listeners. It's My trauma is very apparent. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am wearing. Um, well, I decided to be festive, and I am wearing a full turkey outfit, but mm. it is made of actual turkey, and that's why it smells a little weird. Oh, yeah, like that, the meat dress. Yeah, the meat dress, but <laughs> like not as couture. Just I yeah. went to Walmart to thawed, like thought some turkey and threw yeah. it on myself. Yeah, I yeah. like it. Yeah, you it's... not only thawed it, it looks like you brined it too. <laughs> I know. Just you like, put so much... Just, did, is like this trying. Kamala's recipe that you follow? <laughs> we did, did it. it. We did it, Joe. We, we brined the turkey, it. Coco. We, we brined the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. Oh, man. People are like, what is this? What am I listening to? Oh, my goodness. So um, so relationships was what yeah. we wanted to talk about on Thanksgiving. <laughs> As you're sitting here underneath your desk trying to hide from your family, yeah. um, you can listen to Coco and Donatella talk about love. <laughs> We're going to talk about love a little bit. <laughs> So, um, so let's get into it. So we yeah. have, we literally have like, um, kind of like brushed on this topic just a little bit. Like We have, uh, we've talked about it here and there in, in episodes. Yeah. And it, it's because one of the things is like, I've like, cause this could be like a 20 part series, honestly, when it comes to love and relationships, like yeah. I've had some horribly long term traumatic relationships and Donna's had multiple short term traumatic relationships. Yes. So we could like unpack those things and whatever. And I mean, we might, but like the reason we wanted to talk about it is because being a drag entertainer and dating can just, it's so different, listeners. It's just it honestly it's incredibly different. There's just, a lot of nuances yeah. to it, honestly. Um it's there's this really okay, so I um was watching this cheesy show on Amazon um called Modern Love and hmm. um sh- Anne Hathaway plays this character that um has uh, bipolar disorder and basically talks talks about the differences of being like manic and up and like um, also being in her depressive states and how it's like, yeah. you know, two different people. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's this quote that she references by Rita Hayworth that says, um, all of the men that I ever went to bed with went to bed with Rita, but they woke up with me. And Rita, or not Rita, Gilda, but they woke up with me. Mm. Um, and Gilda was a character that she played. So yeah. Gilda was this person that people had this idea of, you know, this grand person that they saw, you know, performing and being kind of like this big personality. But when it came down to the person underneath all the glitz and the glam and all that, she was someone that they had built up to be someone that she wasn't, basically. Yeah. And I, I can see that. I and um I am I'm feeling OK enough to share this story here on this. So I've had that moment like in drag. So like um the thing is, I am one I'm a person who never has sex and drag. That's like not a thing I ever did. Yeah. Um, But I did have a moment in Grand Junction when um I was out with like one of the queer boys or whatever and I was in face and we were getting our best life together and this ex-military dude like starts hitting me up real hard and stuff when I was in face and um and we were like flirting all night long like it was just like it was a it was like it's kind of like the hot thing or whatever like and he was super down and because a lot of the boys and Donna can test to this like a lot of the boys who would hit on us and drag like it was part of their fantasy too. Like yeah. they're just like, oh, we're flirty, flirty all night, but it's not going anywhere. And some of them, I mean, they were by adjacent. Yeah, or, you know, like it, yeah, exactly. And so, yeah. but this dude, because he was visiting, yeah. um, he like like when the night was over, whatever, because he followed us around to like three different bars. He was yeah. like, he's like, so do you want to like come back to my place? And I was like, this has been fun, but I don't, 
I don't do this. Yeah. And he's like, well, can I give you my number? Because he's like, I'd probably still be down even when you weren't dressed like this. And I was like, oh, well, that. Yeah. That's. Yeah. I was like, that sounds great. And whatever. Um, maybe I'll tell you the rest of the story later, listeners. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I actually because I the thing is, like, Coco is such a persona and she is like this fantasy well, especially at the time, like I was living this fantasy and trying to I wasn't trying to be like the quote unquote like trap or whatever. I wanted to be out um, and like expressing myself and it was nice to be hit on and like treated like respectfully. Yeah. Yeah. I. Yeah. I just um, I definitely did hook up with people in drag. I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not going to deny that mm-hmm. I as you know, as Donna, um which, you know, call me Donna when I'm presenting in drag and out of drag because I feel like it's short for both my, both my names. Both the names. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I definitely have hooked up um, in full drag. And it's honestly, like, it's not a bad experience. Like, I haven't really had any, hmm. like, bad experiences hooking up in drag, really, I guess. Um, I've also, like, made out with a lot of guys in drag that weren't you know i never did that but i wouldn't have been opposed to doing that i just never like (laughs) we have this saying that we always say like everybody loves donna and Mm -hmm. it's kind of true because when she's in drag like it makes people just confused i guess all the time yeah and they just hit on her aggressively (laughs) so like they're like you want to make out now like that's never happened to me (laughs) yeah no that happens a lot (laughs) to me The first time it happened, to be fair, though, um, in Grand Junction, it was at, like, that fetish party. Oh, fair. So, I guess like... that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's not anything that I really knock. Like, I know a lot of other drag entertainers that have hooked up in drag. I think for me, though, I, I don't know, I, it's it's always very really interesting to see where, like, people's intentions are mm-hmm. beyond that, because, like... There's, I remember there's people that, like, are, would always hit on me and be like, gosh, if you could just, like, be this way all the time. You know, like, yeah. they want one or the other. And that's that's kind of, you know, going back to that, like, Gilda Rita kind of, like, right persona is, like, a lot of people see this character. And even, even maybe out of drag, they see you. And mm-hmm. they see that you are kind of having to, like, keep up this, like, persona and... Um, they have an idea of you, but then when they get to know you and they see that it is kind of a hectic, hectic lifestyle to be someone's partner in, um, things, for me anyway, have gone south fairly quickly. Yeah, I've seen it devolve for you. And what really sucks about that moment, too, is that... So, I, I've i never actually been on the receiving end of when somebody was like, I want you to be that way all the time. Yeah. I, I've had it in the sense of friendships and, like, party people, because, like, out of drag, I'm very... I, I'm I like I still love to party, but it's incredibly more reserved. Yeah. Like, and I don't want to be social all the time. I can be at the party, but like sometimes I just want to take my drink and just sit on the couch and feel my buzz for five minutes. Yeah. But Coco does not. She's always like saying something, got the quick lines and like sassy. And so, I, I have had people say to me, they're like when they would meet me out of drag and be like, oh, you're just like a little. I actually had someone say, you're just like a little less fun. Yeah. I was like what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, I mean it's and it, it's kind of true though. Like because in in drag you have to be on a lot All of the time. All the time. Yeah. And I do get that some people use I mean, we're not going to lie about this listener. It's like um I do use my appeal in drag to like um to like gain me things like friends and followers and yeah. like you know, maybe flirt with somebody to get a drink or a cocktail or something like that. I mean, it and like, and I know that some of probably the drag race celebs have used their stardom, but that's like any celebrity. They use their stardom to like, you know, get somebody into bed. And I, and regardless of what you think about that, I mean, it's just a true reality about how the world works. And so yeah. I personally, like what sucks about being single, I will say this, is that you, you didn't realize that your stardom is what made somebody interested in you in the first place. Yeah. Like that part. I never really got used to. Yeah. Because, um, like, it's just like, oh, I just wanted to be close to that thing. Yeah. And you didn't, and you realized that they didn't, you don't even know if they really liked you for you. Yeah. 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 Oh, um, I guess I, I need to ask now. Um, Donna, how are you doing this evening? Oh, Coco, I'll let you know after this brief commercial break. 
Do you wear t-shirts? Do you wear a face mask? I sure as hell hope so. Do you put on your silly little t-shirt and your silly little face mask and wish you had something a little more out there? Yes. Even something, dare I say, matching? Girl, yes, duh. Then it looks like HunterDrips.com is exactly what you need. At HunterDrips.com, socially relevant merch and apparel is up for sale. That's never for profit. 50 to 100% of every purchase is donated. I hear they carry matching shirts and masks with designs that say cute little slogans like defund the police, Black Lives Matter, and it goes over your nose, and even shirts and hats with your own pronouns on them. You know, things that are important. Oh, so you mean important. And almost all of it is donated? Yes, donated, and guess what? What, it's size inclusive too? Yes, up to 5XL. Why just make clothes for skinny people? It's all made by Queer Artist Girl. The creator of HunterDrips.com is trans, fat, lesbian, and the site also includes merch from other queer artists, including gay Portland rapper Tono. Listeners, head on over to HunterDrips.com and use the code SECRET for 15% off your purchase today. That's SECRET for 15% off your purchase at HunterDrips.com. It's a podcast with Coco and Donna tell a podcast. Tune into what they tell you podcast with Coco and Donna tell a podcast. You know, Coco, I am feeling incredibly single, but I'm also 100% worthy, whole, and complete, and deserving of love. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) I I don't know why that's funny. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I I was really trying to, like, just, you know, put something good out into the universe for myself there, but, you know... (laughs) If, oh, if I'm lucky, I'll end up, it's cuffing season. Someone will want to cuddle me. Um, and <laughs> we'll do that safely. I guess I just love how you just make it sound like you're just this barbarian. Like, <laughs> someone will want to touch me. <laughs> like, we'll, do, we'll do that safely. We'll, we'll do it like Bubble Boy. We'll... <laughs> I don't know. Gosh, happy Thanksgiving, listeners. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, relationships, right? <laughs> relationships. Um... <laughs> so um, during the break, because um, our breaks are so long, uh, me yeah. and Donna were talking about what we wanted to talk about when it came to love, relationships, and dating. And um, so my first part of the story is actually, I'm actually not going to talk about my ex as much during this. I want to talk about kind of the beginning stages of me and my current husband, because it's Because I didn't realize it was even happening, but, like, so Adam was always kind of helping us out and drag a little bit. Yeah. Or whatever. But there was this distinct moment, I remember. And we were in the basement of Sabrosa, actually. And um, Adam was, like, helping me with something. And I was just... I. I think the bar owner had yelled at me or something. It was just a really negative Mm. night. Something happened. And... um, I remember I just asked Adam if he could, like, give me a hug. Yeah. Just for a second and whatever. And we just, he just held me for a second and whatever. And he said something nice to me, of course. But, like, and we were just really kind of friends at the time. And I and it was just, I never, I don't actually really know how Adam sees Coco, honestly. Yeah. Like, and I, cause, cause I honestly don't care because he treats me the same in and out, I suppose, yeah. which I know is a unicorn listeners. I get that. But it, when, when I was going through it at the time, I always treated Adam exactly the same in and out of drag as well. Yeah. So I think that you kind of have, I mean, you kind of have a rare situation in which you have, your partner is also someone who really enjoys uh, like offering their talents when it comes to your passion about the craft too. So, um, for instance, Adam likes to help sew things. He also DJs. Yeah. He also, you know, he sets up all the sound, does all that. So having a partner that is immersed in your craft, I think de- definitely helps. Yeah. Um, yeah, it does. And well, I agree with that. Yeah. The thing is, it didn't start that way, though. No. Um, he was like, so at the beginning, because Adam didn't know anything about sound, he didn't really sew yet it was more so he would like help us bring bags in and stuff yeah and like and at that time i just remember him being 
Like, so literally, like, the very first time that me and Adam hung out, I was actually hanging up posters for a show. Yeah. Um, and I just called him, and I was like, hey, new person I just met, do you want to, like, come hang up posters with me? Mm -hmm. And this is the first, technically, this would be the first time he's even seeing me out of drag, and I didn't yeah. really care, because he was just, like, a friend who I had met. Yeah. Like, nothing was actually even happening at the time. Yeah. He's always been incredibly helpful. Yeah, seriously. So... Donna, tell me about your relationships. <laughs> you know, you've been all there for them. all no, of them. No, I haven't been through any of them. <laughs> um, you've, you've sat there and witnessed the, the car accidents in the passenger seat oh my gosh. while I drove. <laughs> well, and it's what's funny, though, is like uh, Donna has really grown in her relationships in the sense that like when she talks to me about them, she actually gives herself the advice when she's talking to me about them nowadays. <laughs> and I'm just like, mm hmm yeah, yeah, girl, just that spiral was cute. I get there <laughs> eventually. I get there eventually. I'll ask you questions about how you perceived the situation and then how I perceive it now. And basically, I'm, I'm kind of able to understand where things went wrong. Um, yeah, I can see that. In a, in a lot of the situations, but also, I don't know, it's just... Um, yeah, dating is is fucking rough. <laughs> it is. I'm actually. You said this recently. Donna said to me, she's like, "No, dating is a nightmare." Because I was like, "Because you know, being yeah. married, like, I was like, oh, I kind of miss dating. It was fun, you know, it's flirty free." And Donna was like, "No, dating is terrible. It's terrible." She's like, "Dating is really awful." She's like, "Think about what that." She's like, "Because honestly, dating is constant anxiety." It is, and the thing that I liked was. A little bit of the chase, of course, and the mm -hmm. excitement of someone new. Yeah. But the process of dating was actually incredibly dramatic. Yeah. I mean, I think that's why, like, nowadays, I, for, I don't have time for, for people who don't make me feel secure. Yeah. I think I spent too much time, too much, uh, too many years in my 20s um, chasing after and pleasing people who made me feel incredibly insecure. Well, and then because at the end of the day, people are, some of the listeners are like, well, why did you do that? And it's because, well, mm -hmm. you thought it could be something. Yeah. Like, there is a line between, like, you know, this person might not, like, let's just use something easy, like smoking cigarettes or whatever. Yeah. And, like, could you have said no to the third date after you found out they smoked, smoked cigarettes? Of course you could have. But, like, you liked them, and so you just kind of kept pushing through. But now let's turn it into something that's not as tangible, and it's, like, a personality trait that you didn't quite see. Yeah. Or something about them, something about you that you couldn't see. Yeah. Like, that's what makes it really difficult and challenging. I think that's, I mean, it's kind of what we were talking about before the break, though, is having that, like, persona of like, like people have an idea in their heads of, about who they think you are. And then the more that they become familiar with that idea and they reject you, the honestly, like the more it hurts because like you let this person in and you let this person like you were vulnerable with this person and it ends up, um, you know, just hurting. It ends up hurting. And I think for, especially when I was younger, I, I gave like way too much of my heart up to people who like, who didn't deserve that. Yeah. And, and, I, and I feel like that's a trait that a lot of us do when we're in our early twenties. Yeah. Well, and I think as, as Queens and as entertainers too, it's like, you know, the prospect of love and the prospect of like someone wanting to be involved in this life, um, is, it's uh, unique a lot of the times. Yeah. Because we get bullied on these fucking apps. <laughs> yeah, know? we did. Yeah, like, we do. I actually, I did. I wrote... It's not for one reason, it's for another. I had actually wrote this really endearing thing, actually, and I'm going to paraphrase it. I wrote it on my Facebook, and Donna's not on Facebook, so she wouldn't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But I had wrote, um, maybe like two days ago, that... Uh, I was talking about the apps and I said, I made that comment again that I really didn't even know that Grindr ever made a noise because I didn't um, until like I was hanging out with one of my gay friends in Denver um, and there was this thing going off. I was like, what is that? He's like, oh, it's just my Grindr. I was like, oh, I didn't even know Grindr made a noise. Yeah. It wasn't even a joke. I just didn't know because and there, there's a couple of things. So like obviously I was overweight. I was black. Um, 
and stuff like that, living living in Grand Junction, Colorado. And um, that's not necessarily appealing, I guess, I suppose, or whatever. But, like, so Scruff, Growler, Grinder, any of them, Jack, like, any of that. Like, I never really got any messages on any of that stuff. Yeah. And, and I felt – and I never tried to make it – let it make me feel – like I was less than I suppose. Yeah. But I did put a lot of myself out there. And then I remembered the, what the point of the set, there were two things in the status. I actually started removing, like I'd remove my picture or my age or my race um, because I just wanted, I wanted to be able to get to the first date. I could never get to the first date. Yeah. Like, and it just, and it was so alarming and hurtful to me. And then, so what I was telling people is, over the last nine months, especially with COVID, if you looked like me and you had to deal with that and you don't have my self-esteem, like, I bet you're probably starting to feel like you're worthless. I was like, I bet with nine months of being only be able to meet people in apps, mm -hmm. um, I bet you're starting to feel worthless. Because literally what I said was, uh, I met my current husband um, because he just happened to walk into a drag queen karaoke. Yeah. I met him in person. Yeah, it was a very serendipitous type of moment com comparative to like how most people meet nowadays. Right. And so I told, so I was saying the apps didn't work for me. Yeah. I was like, I was on all of them. I did everything that I thought I was supposed to do. I was like, and I did, oh, and this is cause I swiped right on everyone on twin Tinder. I'm not joking. I swiped yeah. right on every single person when I was on Tinder and only got a couple of matches and they never led to a first date. And yeah. so I literally just ended with like, but it didn't work for me. Yeah. I, I met my person in person. And so for all of you out there who might be like me, I was like, maybe you just have to wait until you can see somebody because those apps don't define you. I mean, honestly, it would be so nice for something like that to happen organically, <laughs> you know, like... Mm -hmm. so organic that it's like we meet in the organic section of the produce aisle <laughs> <laughs> but like you know it's just I don't know I I, I the world has changed with how we meet people and mm -hmm. that kind of sucks because it's like also with social media too like mm -hmm. I feel like if I haven't met people off of apps then they've slid into my DMs on Instagram and yeah. it's like uh, what they have an idea of who I am based off of my freaking Instagram like that shows like such a small like little clip of who I am you know like... yeah and you have a gr and here, this is why it hit me sideways mm -hmm. because the pictures on Tinder are usually just your Instagram photos right yeah yeah and exactly. your Instagram is very well done for what an Instagram is supposed to be but mm -hmm. in my opinion it's not really actually who you are no like like I took the photo of you when we were at the beach you yeah. know you're like well let me stay. and then you're like oh, I didn't want to look this way and then blah 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 yeah and in the car you were like oh you got a really good candid when you yeah. were snapping a bunch of photos of me yeah. and because that's the thing, though. Like, so people, we do, I mean, we all know that we put our best foot forward on the apps. And, like, you know, this is a picture I think I look great in. Yeah. That kind of has my hobbies in the background or whatever. Donna likes to go hiking. Yeah. And so that's, you know, so it's not a lie. We were there. That's what we yeah. were doing. It wasn't staged. Yeah. But at the same time, like, it also doesn't say that, like, you know, Donna likes, you know, making jewelry. And it doesn't say yeah. that Donna's really into, like, you know, witchcraft and, you know, all these other things. Like, yeah. it just doesn't. Like, no. It doesn't like, and also you get, you get pictures of me looking, honestly, most of the time my best <laughs> and like in, <laughs> it, my best in the best lighting with, you know, so, and I facetune sometimes too, you know, like there are certain, mm -hmm. certain pictures I won't retouch at all. And then there's some where I will go into it and overly facetune just because I need something to post that day. And I'm not really happy with like the excess photos that I have left in my camera roll, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, oh, <laughs> have, have you, you done touched that? me to my soul too much. <laughs> That's a little bit too serious. Girl. We're going to back that off. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's also like those photos of me on Instagram are, are photos of me on my best days. Mm -hmm. And they're not, you know, they're not me when I don't have my, eyebrows fully <laughs> um filled in and right. um you know my my blemishes covered or you know all of that so it's like we also get this false sense of like what people look like too on the on the day to day and it's all because like the world that we live in and you know you get that being a drag queen or not yeah it's true and i kind of want to go back to what you were saying about you know wanting to find something organic and wanting to find an actual connection and like not giving yourself to too many people and whatever. Yeah. And the thing about it is to actually find love, you actually have to make yourself vulnerable to be hurt. And I hate that. Yeah. I do. It sucks about that. It's like such a, I get the phrase, like, like even the phrase of, um, 
be like, well, I don't want to ruin the friendship if they're not interested. Yeah. I kind of get that because the if you go for like if you're really close friends with somebody, but you start like catching feels and you say something and the friendship ends, then you've lost a friend and you had to be vulnerable enough to say it. So now your feelings are hurt. Yeah. And gosh, romantic feeling hurt. That stuff just lasts forever. It really does. Yeah. It um it it leaves like little little wounds. Some scars. <laughs> Little wounds. <laughs> Little wounds. Little wounds. Um, <laughs> scars, baggage, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> well, um, and even so, too, like what you were saying, like the image of – I used to tell Donna this phrase so all the time back in the day is like because Donna doesn't really have a type, like no. per se. Like she'll give anyone a chance, right? Yeah. And, you know, she's attractive, like really, really attractive. And so uh, like she date a person who – less attractive than her and I'll just be frank <laughs> always usually less attractive than her <laughs> and then they wouldn't treat her super right or whatever or super well or didn't like like one of her negative qualities because we all have negative qualities yeah and and then they just like dip and I was always so confused by that because when I date like I never dipped after the first flaw because, like, I have a ton of flaws. Maybe it's because I, like, let it out too soon. I don't <laughs> I don't know. Like, maybe I just got to, like, keep the crazy in for a little bit and then trap them. <laughs> like, <laughs> True. T. I don't know. It's, like, it's hard because um, I find that when I connect with people, I open up very quickly and very easily when I when I feel a connection with people. And that I just, like, I, like... I like people. I get a lot of like energy and warmth from talking to people that you do that are new in my life. And I share some sort of interests with, you know? Um, yeah, I've actually, I kind of see it too. Um, like I've been talking recently to some of the women that Donna have met, um, since we've moved here, like recently, like just having long conversations and I kind of see why she warmed up to those people because it takes me so much longer in friendship to warm up to a person. Yeah. Like I don't give away all my cards. I don't tell all my feelings cause I just don't like being hurt in friendships. Cause like, obviously when you're married, like I don't have to worry about the whole love and flirting and attractiveness thing, whatever. Yeah. But like in friendships, that's where they can really wound me Yeah. because I'm, it's so sad when it just doesn't work out in a certain way. Yeah. We've seen that happen. Oh gosh! So many, so many times. <laughs> so very many times. <laughs> uh, what do you but... think? What do you? Th- what are you looking for in love? Like in general? I just want to be appreciated. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Someone to love me, mom. Um, we did it, Joe. <laughs> We did it. <laughs> Someone appreciated me, Coco. No, no one has yet. Um, <laughs> um, honestly, I I think what I want is I I want some somebody who makes me feel secure. Mm-hmm. That's that's my biggest thing. That's is, fair. Is um I have really anxious tendencies when it comes to dating and relationships. So having some sense of security that someone is just like in my corner is is I think important for me um I'm I'm not picky I don't have a type when it comes to like physicality oh gosh, they've all looked different they've all looked different <laughs> yeah they all I've dated a variety of different types of um of people and I uh I don't know I I am open to the idea of love in many shapes and forms um, but I, uh, yeah, for me, it's, it's more so security and then having open dialogue and communication, like check-ins, all of that, I think are, are something that'll be important to me, but also like not being afraid to have those conversations. I want to, I want to ask you a question that you're going to have to unpack on this podcast for our amazing listeners here. Okay. I just always wanted cause you did it with one of the last two. You did the thing where they they were messaging you so often, and for some reason, why is that a put off to you? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because it's I I think it has to do um it has to do with me I think craving that anxiety from mm. from being so into oh people gosh. who don't like who, dark. who don't return it yeah i think i think it honestly it has to do with craving that anxiety like craving that that feeling of that anxious attachment of like oh i'm waiting on that text and stuff like that you know mm-hmm. um 
So when I know that I'm going to get it, I don't know. It just kind of it. I don't. It kind of like demystifies it for me. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, which actually, is weird. That's so weird. And it's actually, a bad trait. It is a bad trait mm-hmm. because I, as you were saying it, I realize because Adam has all of the healthy things I need in a relationship, mm-hmm. and I do want to say that like obviously relationships are built for certain people. Certain kind of relationships are built for certain people. Mm-hmm. So with my relationship with Adam, like it's really built for both of us to really thrive in that, and he'll do things that I'm immediately annoyed by, but I check myself. I have to literally physically check myself to be like, this is a nice thing. Yeah. Like this is a very nice thing. Yeah. Like, or whatever. So like even like this, well, at the time of filming this, uh, like I was sitting on the couch and I was just like kind of in a giddy mood and he made me food. And I didn't ask for that. Yeah. And I desperately needed it. And I was kind of annoyed immediately because I was like trying to find us something on Uber Eats to eat together. Yeah. And like, and I literally had to check myself and be like, he just made you food. Yeah. Stop this is being a good awful. Thing. Quit, like, yeah. what's wrong? Why are you self sabotaging? Right I think now? it's because of old habits. Old oh, habits gosh, die hard. Right? Old, like, I mean, especially like, I mean, we're at the end of our episode basically, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't, I think being single for so long, it's like, um, also having someone constantly there and present when I have had my independence for so long is also, um, it feels some, sometimes intrusive. Yeah. And so, Oh yeah. For you. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I think I shut down in that, in that way. But Um, you also need those. I know. Well now I bet you didn't as much before, but now you'd need those check-ins. Yeah. You really do, because yeah. people have been really flaky in a bad way. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That makes a lot more sense. I, yeah, no, I mean, I think there's definitely things that I'm learning about myself and, like, fixing, but I also know that, like, you know, a, a relationship is something that's nice that I, I would like to have. I, I would definitely like that for myself at some point, because I've never had a long-term one, but um, I know that this next one, like it has to be something that is lasting for me and something that has some longevity to it because, uh, I, I hate dating and I really like it. I have dating fatigue. (laughs) Oh yeah. I really do. I don't even, I don't have any of the apps right now. I'm just kind of like staying off. I, I, yeah, I just have dating fatigue because it's, it's hard listing, (laughs) constantly listing your favorite things to people only for it to, last a few weeks right and having the same dialogues over and over again yeah. what does that comedian say that like we listen to be like uh, i started dating again because i'm addicted to, to trauma. trauma yeah <laughs> <laughs> basically and it, it's true and actually what i want to say to that is like but you can't find love without it like that's yeah I mean, sure, you could probably like build a deep friendship that you're like, oh, I kind of like these this person a little bit, but then, yeah. but that's like a three year game, girl. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's got to take time. Yeah, yeah, to like build into that. I think we're probably gonna have to make this a two part episode. Yeah, um, because there's still a lot more I want to say. But before we end this episode, since it is Thanksgiving, yeah. Donna, what are you thankful for in 2020? Ooh, what I am thankful for in 2020. I am thankful that we as a country are leaning in the right direction, hopefully with a lot of understanding, progress, time, healing. Um, We will see a better future for ourselves than what these last four years have been. So mine's entirely political. I'm, I'm, I am <laughs> thankful for um, what has transpired in this election cycle and that hopefully we will have a brighter future. Hopefully. So for 2020, I'm going to turn it and because mine's incredibly personal. Um, I am so thankful for my life this year. Mm-hmm. Like, so... Um, I, obviously, I got married in February of 2020, mm-hmm. and I'm so happy in my marriage and in a way that I didn't even know it was possible to be happy in a marriage or even just happy in a relationship, just an effing general. Uh, but the other things that came with... So today, well, at the time of filling this, I, I watched Kiki's Delivery Service, which is my favorite movie of all time. Mm-hmm. And I realized something as I was watching that. Um 
because she moves to she wanted to move to a city by the ocean. Mm-hmm. That's what she wanted to do. Like when she left home, she wanted to be by a city by the ocean. She finds one. Obviously, goes through all the trials and tribulations. And then I realized it was like as I was like cuddling with my man, watching this movie, living in a city by the ocean, technically, yeah. and like. Um, I just recently got a raise at work and like just so many of the right good things. Yeah. Like things I've worked hard for. Like I've worked hard to move across this country. And ending in a year that has not been diamonds, you know? Oh gosh, (laughs) this year has been so many trials and tribulations. It's it's been hard. And so like literally I worked hard to move here. I worked hard to get into my marriage and Mm -hmm. fall in love in that way. And like I worked hard at my career. And so Mm -hmm. I'm thankful because I finally am seeing some of the benefits of the things that I've worked really hard for in my life. Yeah. And I'm thankful for that. And I'm so I'm thankful for my friends, my family, my love, my career. Because honestly, those things have kept me sane during all the crazy things happening around me. Yeah. And thank God for, we did it, Joe. We, we did, did it. it. You're the next president of the United Stay. States. <laughs> <laughs> and Coco, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful. <laughs> I'm thankful for you, Coco. Thank for you, Donna. <laughs> we did it. We did it. We finished the episode. <laughs> Bye. Bye. We'll see you next week. <laughs> this has been another episode of A Gem of a Secret Podcast. The hosts of A Gem of a Secret Podcast are Donatella My Secrets and Coco Jim Holiday. You may follow Donatella My Secrets at Donatella underscore My Secrets on Instagram. You may follow Coco Jim Holiday at Coco Jim Holiday on Instagram. Original music by Touche Douche and Party Favors. You can follow them respectively at the Touche Douche and at Party Favors Music on Instagram. For more exclusive content, visit www.ajemofasecretpodcast.com. That is a j e m of a secret podcast. Dot com. Be sure to tune in every week on Thursday for a new episode wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have any comments or questions, email us at a gem of a secret pod at gmail.com. Please don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.